President Biden's visit to Israel is intended to show support for the United States' closest Middle East ally, but he's also slated to address Israeli leaders on how to prevent unnecessary civilian casualties in the Gaza Strip. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is already on the ground, first Israel and today in Jordan, laying that framework and ushering humanitarian aid that had previously been blocked, all part of apparent efforts to head off a wider regional conflict, with the United States uniquely positioned to influence both Israel and key Arab officials, as many hold on to hope of a reshaped Middle East and, importantly, diplomatic normalization. For more insight on this war and the political players involved, I'm joined by Michael Boyle, an associate professor at the Rutgers Camden Department of Political Science, who focuses on terrorism and political violence. Dr. Mike Boyle, thanks so much for joining me. Let me ask you first, uh, Secretary of State Blinken is in Israel. President Biden is also making a visit there. What is the U.S. foreign interest in this war? So a couple of things. And I think part of the reason President Biden is there is to signal the closeness of the U.S. to Israel and backing the United States up at essentially their moment of peril. But I also think there's a wider set of strategic objectives there. I think the United States is also trying to ensure that what happens next in Gaza is consistent with U.S. interests. So in other words, is there a plan for the administration of Gaza if there is a ground invasion from the north? What's going to happen in terms of the humanitarian corridor? So I think there's really two things going on there. Part of it is signaling political support, signaling also okay, what do we want this post-war situation to look like, and how do we make sure this doesn't get out of control and become a wider regional war? What is it specifically that Hamas wants? Um, and is there an opportunity for that to be gained at this moment in time where things stand? So you know, it, it, as a broad question, Hamas has traditionally been an enemy of Israel and its charter calls for the destruction of the Israeli state. When we think about its, its immediate tactical objectives, what did it want to do in this specific raid that it essentially abducted 200 to 250 people, we think? There's a there's a debate over what it immediately wanted. Uh, one thing that has come out recently from some Hamas statements is that they seem to think that this would produce a prisoner exchange. And that is something that has happened in the past, that you know the abduction, for example, of Gilead Shalit from the Israeli army years ago negotiated uh, in the long run, got Palestinian prisoners out of jail, which was to the benefit of Hamas. And they said something in the last couple of days about, well, we thought what we would do is do this raid and we would later get you know, some negotiation over prisoners. And I think the real issue here is that Hamas has miscalculated. They've miscalculated the degree of anger this is produced within Israel, the degree which is seen as a moral threat to the state. And I think what we're seeing now is a situation where the situation is spiraling out of control, in part due to that miscalculation. You mentioned moral threat, and it makes me think of proportionality. We have a number of U.N. officials and other humanitarian officials who have said that Israel's response in Gaza is not proportionate, that both sides have committed war crimes. If you can, and this is such a loaded question, but the conflict there has been going on for, for so many years, um, the occupation of Palestine, um, and the way with which this is viewed, the fact that violence has been essentially bubbling in corners uh, of the country for, for many years. Um, and so to that extent, can you speak to how this tension has been rising? So I think there's there's been a longstanding, obviously a longstanding conflict for a number of years between Hamas and Israel, and more generally over the Palestinian situation, over the status of the West Bank and Gaza as occupied territories and the formation of eventually a two-state uh, Palestinian state. And so I think in the larger question, that's the sort of background context to it. In the short run, the question is, when Israel strikes at, Ga at Hamas in Gaza, are its active attack attacks first proportional? And secondly, are they consistent with the laws of war? And so you have a positive moral obligation, for example, to make sure that you don't deliberately target civilians. And so that's the kind of moral and political burden that's put on the Israeli army at this point, which is to say, all right, if you're going to go in and invade Gaza in the north, are you going to do it in a way that ensures a degree of civilian protection? I think that's part of the miscalculation here, is that from the Israeli point of view, their war goal is to destroy Hamas. In order to do that, you essentially have to go into Gaza and you have to go into the tunnels that they have built. And that is a very costly uh, military effort. It's going to involve a substantial commitment of resources and troops. It's also very risky to do this in an urban environment. I think the real question is, what does Hezbollah do? Does Hezbollah do a few token strikes to look like it's resisting but not actually engage in a full-scale regional war, or does Hezbollah do something more substantial, in which case this could spiral very quickly out of control 
into a regional war where you know Israel's fighting in Gaza, it's also fighting in Lebanon, and that begins to draw in other actors like Iran and the United States. So I think at a minimum, we're looking at a ground invasion of Gaza that is going to be extremely costly. I think at a maximum, you're looking at a wider regional war. Whew. Uh, Michael Boyle is Associate Professor of Political Science at Rutgers Camden. Michael, thank you so much. Thank you for having me.